Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kirti Chanda. I head medical affairs for Metropolis Group and I'm the senior oncopathologist. The topic of today's discussion is PDL1 by immunohistochemistry. And why is it so important? It is because the way medical oncology has shaped and evolved over the years. Today, you and I know that targeted therapy is better than chemotherapy. And immunotherapy is even better than that. And when you customize it or personalize it and do a combination immunotherapy, the results get only better as far as patient survival is concerned. And time has proven this and FDA has approved a number of agents over the last five years, whether for first line or for second line chemotherapy in various organ systems, including lung, breast and bladder and various others, which I will come to shortly. We all know that companion diagnostics is about putting something together, a whole combination, the equipment, the assay, the clone, the drug. But whatever you do and however you analyze, ultimately, when you have a PDL1 positive case, you do achieve something. There is another whole chapter that opens for the patient, another whole avenue where he can get a different kind of treatment and a better survival. Pembrolizumab, which we know is a very important drug in this category and is expressed on lymphocytes, dendritic cells, macrophages, as well as tumor cells. We know it is active in a variety of solid tumors. Apart from lung cancer, even in melanoma, mismatch repair deficient colorectal cancer, gastric cancer, urothelial cancer, Merkel cell carcinoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, and triple negative breast cancer. When we focus on lung cancer, we know how critical this gets because lung cancer is a highly invasive and rapidly metastasizing cancer. And unless you detect it early, it has very poor survival. And that is why we all try to find targets in terms of EGFR, ALK, ROS, MET, everything possible. But sometimes there is nothing. And that is when PDL1 comes to the rescue. PDL1 expression in the tumor cells predicts responsiveness to the inhibitors. And that is why, based on the type of expression, or rather, the amount of expression, it is approved as a first-line or a second-line treatment agent. I'll take you through our experience, a very humble experience, of starting in, say, 2017, when it was still a standout assay. I remember we used to send this test as an international outsource. It was an expensive test, and it took many days. And the oncologist used to keep calling for reports, and he could do nothing. But today, we have the test in-house. And we have seen that now we've been able to cater much faster to these patients and do the test quicker. We have toyed around with all the clones, and we know that there is a high level of concordance between TACO clone as well as the Ventana clone. The criteria for reporting and scoring of both these assays are quite similar if you look at them. You either have a non-expressor or you have a low expressor or you have a high expressor. And that quantification becomes very critical. If the tumor is more than 50% positive, it is even approved for first-line immunotherapy. We have even tried testing on cell blocks apart from tissue proper, and the results are very good. We started with very few numbers initially because the drug was also not easily available, but now that the drug is available, patients are eager, the oncologists are prescribing this assay. So when we look at the different organ systems in which the oncologist asks for the assay, obviously lung cancer is the first and foremost. 75% of the cases that we have received all belong to lung cancer. But also it is done for GI, head and neck, breast and other cancers. When we look at the positivity, it is very motivating to see that 30% of lung cancer cases are coming positive for the assay, followed by 1-4% to in various other organ systems. And so does the proportion score vary between the various low and high. This is just an example for you to see the kind of staining. You can have a weak to moderate staining or you can have a strong staining. But what is very, very important, and I will urge all the pathologists who report on PDL1, that their report must incorporate three essential things. The tumor proportion score. How many cells are actually positive for PDL? You should also mention whether the staining is weak 
moderate or strong. All these things are very important for the oncologist to plan the treatment. We all are trying to find biomarkers for immunotherapy. We can check the tumor mutation burden, TMB as it is called, immune gene profiling from tumor tissue, or identifying the various mutations, which ones, BRCA1, BRCA2, OLE, OLD, and MSI, and we can do IHC. However, we try to find the immunotherapy target. We know how important immunotherapy is and the various approaches by which it can be tackled. So one is adaptive immunotherapy, where you do the passive transfer of immune cells with anti-cancer activity, such as a tumor-associated antigen-specific T-clones and the tumor-infiltrating lymphocytes or TILs, the genetically immune cells, the cancer vaccine, where you immunize to enhance the anti-tumor reactions, and the non-specific stimulation of immune response, where you either stimulate the effector cells or you inhibit the regulatory cells. Whatever may be the approach, the pace of development continues to gain steam, with more than half a million patients enrolled in various clinical immunology trials, testing nearly 1,000 agents and 3,000. A pace of development continues to gain steam, with more than half a million patients enrolled in various clinical immuno-oncology trials for about 1,000 agents and about 300 targets. And we can only hope that we see more and more of these targets and improve patient survival. These are some references which you can check yourself online. That there is a lot of literature available on this as it is a very critical asset. Thank you for your time and attention.